Travis Wayne did so. Uh, I find it very curious that MAGA are uh, all uh, outraged and insistent on a conspiracy uh, where some of the older generation tie the deep state to the Illuminati. And it's interesting because they don't see the sign on their own GOP elephant. The change to the Illuminati symbol was made in the Nixon campaign. And so could you imagine if the church, the Mormons, were to find out that they were the great and abominable church? It's the same comparison. And it's strange how the followers of each group don't see that uh, they themselves are guilty of what they are accusing blindly in others and in straw men. In 1826, there was what was called the Anti-Mason Movement. It actually got started in 1827, but the incident happened in September of uh, 1826 in Canandaigua, New York. And yes, it does have everything to do with church history. And so, I don't understand why the church doesn't include it. <laughs> if you know my videos, you know I know exactly. And you know exactly why I do videos exposing the crimes and corruption and not just the lies of the church because they're the Illuminati Church. They're an abominable. They've got the exact same symbol that MAGA GOP do. But back then, they didn't have Google search. They didn't have social media. They had to rely on newspapers. And it was a news reporter that published an article about uh, Captain William Morgan who had disappeared under suspicious circumstances. It was clear and obvious that he was being silenced from writing the two books that he was being paid in advance to write for the Batavian Press there in western New York. And uh, the fact that he was getting arrested in Canandaigua uh, is the connection to the church. And if uh, you don't do your church history research thoroughly, you're going to end up continuing to believe as a Mormon that the whole history of the church, with Heavenly Father and Jesus appearing, and Moroni, which is corrected from Nephi, which is incorrect, and rocks and a hat, and treasure plates that aren't supposed to be available for others to verify the reality of it. And it just happens to plagiarize contemporary books at the time, even the errors of the 1769 King James Version of the Bible. You know, you can't do that, because if you accept that, that all of that is hogwash, uh, then you're betraying Mormonism. And Mormons will be justified in calling you Korahor, Antichrist, you know, the devil, and all that, as, I, as you call me.
and ex-Mormons by not doing the thorough research necessary will end up believing that Joseph Smith was pulling a con with his rocks in a hat just making it up off the top of his head from what he can remember from his Captain Kidd storybooks rather than trying to figure out how Sidney Rigdon fits into the picture as the major author of the Book of Mormon, not Joseph Smith. And what was the reality of the Egyptian treasure plates buried in the ground and in caves? Instead, you just assume, as D. Michael Quinn did, it's all just magic and witchcraft. So then you start thinking that it was the Smiths who were the evil witches that need to be burned at the stake. Not knowing the history of the Smith family being involved in the Salem witch trials condemning witchcraft. Although there is suspicious because it was a uh, brother-in-law in the family who was accusing the wife <laughs> and another woman <laughs> Of witchcraft needing the Smith to uh, testify on his behalf <laughs> so there is some suspicion as to the, re the legitimacy of that trial nonetheless hi uh, and so uh, the people at that time you know the the church hadn't been started, so there's nothing about, you know, the Book of Mormon or anything like that, you know. It's William Morgan's book. And and he's locked up so that he can't complete the book. And so then there's a, a plan made to sneak him out of the country, except there, there's some problems. Uh, Thomas Monroe is found wearing uh, William Morgan's clothes and he's been drowned in the lake there in Niagara as the wife is the one who testifies that that's her husband not William Morgan and can't understand why he's wearing William Morgan's clothes and so then a sheriff hires a tracker and the tracker finds some bones, but without forensic scientists, you, know, you can't do much of anything other than speculate. But uh, the tracker continues on, finds that uh, William Morgan had made it up into Canada, but then decided not to stay in Canada, and the tracker tracked him to the East Coast, where he caught a ship, where he lost him, but the ship manifest uh, shows that the ship sank in the storm and it was believed that he died at sea except for the fact that the sheriff who hired the tracker got more severe punishment in prison for doing his job, which is a bit suspicious. Why is the sheriff getting in trouble for trying to find William Morgan? But that's the kind of brotherhood that was had back in those days. And if you just lump in, as the reporter did, all Freemasonry as one, you're being misinformed. There were two main uh, Freemasonries. There was the Scottish Rites and the York Rites. The Smiths were the York Rites. And that's where you find out, oh, the highest rank is the Knights Templar. Oh, they were the ones with the Holy Grail. The bloodline of the Christ. And got in trouble with a Pope on Friday the 13th in October concerning Egyptian religion 
and Egyptian treasure plates. Coming to America, where they were buried in caves and under the ground. And so, uh, not having any of that background, and not knowing or not even pursuing to look for it, yeah, you fall for, well, I'm born and raised in this church, I don't want to be made a fool of, so I'm going to double down and say that it's all a true history. The Book of Mormon's a true history, too, because, heaven forbid, it should be the replacement book of William Morgan. And uh, likewise for ex-Mormons. You know, if you just assume that Joseph Smith is a fraud and trying to con and scam everybody, and you don't recognize Sidney Rigdon as the author, and you don't recognize that Brigham Young profited from Joseph's assassination, then you're gonna assume incorrect information as well. And uh, you're going to get caught up into claiming that the current church is the true succession from Joseph Smith and that they're all part and parcel of the same organization that Joseph Smith started. Being clueless that the current church is nothing like Joseph's. Even Brigham Young completely changed it. And so, I know Everybody wants to maintain their own belief system, just as MAGA do, denying science, denying the truth. But uh, could you imagine if uh, the MAGA followers realized it was them? You know, that they've been conned? This is why Trump and Matt Gates. Jeffrey Epstein, we're all involved with the pedophilia, you know, the church likewise is involved in pedophilia, did you know that? Have you forgotten about the Boy Scouts? 3,000 boys are suing for redress. Arizona, I haven't heard much from that, church must have settled. That's what happens. In a settlement, it becomes a non-disclosure situation. And so, anybody remember Nelson's daughter and her husband back in the 80s in their bountiful basement? Six people who were children at the time claimed that Nelson's daughter and husband were performing satanic pedophilia rituals in their basement home there in Bountiful. And it was a lawsuit. It's been silent for a long time. Haven't heard any results as if the as to whether or not the Supreme Court had rejected Nelson from being a character witness or a, some kind of witness to the events or, or uh, whether it was dismissed or and so I mean logically there likely was a settlement and so everything has to go into non-disclosure period and that's disturbing because this should be made public record that there was a settlement agreement and so uh, yeah I know Mormons don't want to know that the church is wicked, that the church commits crimes, that the church is trying to overthrow America because establishing the kingdom of God is more important than America. Mormons just don't stop and think, wait a minute, committing a crime to be righteous? No, wickedness never was happiness. It's the same thing. Corruption never is righteousness. Illegality is never lawful. It's not a difficult concept, but when you get caught up 
forcing yourself into a paradigm, you don't pull out. But uh, if you didn't know, uh, the news reporter who blamed all Freemasonry and said that William Morgan was most likely murdered, but his body has not been found, and everybody was panicked in those days. But there was a secret underground movement within Freemasonry, and they panicked. And the people, in mass, came out and burned down all but a few Freemasonry temples. That was the result back in those days. And today, you have Pizzagate, where you have individuals who act. And then they don't find it, and so you, you then have to speculate. Well, there's a secret hatch then, or or other uh, tunnels. You know, the church is building a second tunnel. <laughs> I thought that was funny. It's in the church news. They're advertising it. YouTube has a video of it. But, uh, yeah, but that's what the church fears, though, guys. And it's strange that the church is openly committing crime, even though it's within the religion. And so it requires whistleblowers within Mormonism to expose it. And when the church has full control over all communications, even YouTube, they get to pick and choose who gets prominently featured. And John DeLynn, who has a website dedicated to all of the sexual assaults and pedophilia that he's accused of, just accused, gets top billing on YouTube for the critic side. Whereas me, exposing the church for their sex crimes and other treasonous, terrorist, seditious, murderous, because the church is trying to have me murdered. And you'd think people would go, wait a minute, why is the church so desperate to have Travis murdered and not John DeLynn? They only excommunicated John DeLynn. They're not even trying to excommunicate Travis. What's going on? But, you know, I guess you guys don't watch the crime investigation shows. I don't know what else you're watching. But uh, everybody seems to like conspiracy shows. They just can't identify it in reality. They make it up instead, creating their own reality. So, yeah, the church fears uh, getting exposed and everything burning to the ground, just like it did in 1826. Because, yes, the church was a part of it, just not the Smiths and Brigham and Heber that had their temples burned and they wanted revenge. And then you see uh, in the new book about Brigham Young a rewriting of his history to justify him as a good guy where uh, it's exposed innocently that Brigham Young joined because the church did not heal his wife as she died. And then all of a sudden he decides to join after three years of attending church. And the author thinks that it's that Brigham Young's the good guy for being so faithful in church attendance. But he doesn't catch on that Brigham Young only joins after his wife dies. Yeah, if you don't want to see the reality, you make up your own.